Hello, hello, and welcome to the Introverted Manager. Today we'll be building period table, which will allow me to filter my data either by month to date, or quarter to date, or year to date, calendar or fiscal, or for rolling 3, 6, or 12 months. This period table utilizes uh, my ultimate date table, so make sure to check out that video. I'll post it somewhere here. But for now, let's dive right in. Let's see how to build that period table, which allows you to filter your data by different time slices. Important disclaimer here. This is strictly based on the date table that I built previously. You can watch my other video to get it. I'm utilizing all of the logic that is in that date table and therefore it makes it quite streamlined to build this period table. Let's see how it works. And actually, first take a look what I have here. It's months to date, months to date close period means last pre finished months, quarter to date, quarter to date, but again close period, which means only finished months within the quarter. Same with year to date, fiscal year to date, and roll in months. Now let me go to transform data. So just a quick overview. This is my day table. It has lots of fields like offsets, quarter, fiscal year columns, months to date, quarter to date, year to date, fiscal year to date, etc. Everything that you might need. I will be building on top of that logic. And let me open advanced editor and let's see the code. What happens here? So first I'm referencing my initial day table. That's our building block, starting build block. Then I'm getting current date, which will be used later on. So far only standard uh, M functions. Date from daytime local now. Okay. Then I'm calculating uh, start dates for rolling 3, 6, 12 months. Here I've decided to use uh, date add months function to be able to get exactly three months back. Not 99 back, but because amount of days in a month differ, I want to get, I want to account for that. So this function will help with that. Date, add months, I'm specifying today's date and specifying that I want to get minus three months, minus six months, minus 12 months and storing it away in those variables. Okay. Then rolling end date. Uh, here I'm just adding one day to two day to have to have it as full day in the end when I'm calculating something to include today's date because otherwise it will not be included. And then that's where the logic starts for periods. MTD. So I'm building, let me start from the inside. I have, I'm selecting rows from my day table. Only those rows which for column MTD have value of one, which means it will only select those uh, that range of dates uh, for the current months. And I'm selecting only date column from date table. That's the only one I need. Great. That's what select columns does. Then, as the next step, into that virtual table, uh, I'm adding period column. This is what add column does. I'm adding period column, and for each row, I'm adding MTD. Because later, I will be adding that period column into my slicer, and therefore, I need to display my choices. So. I'm adding MTD type text, obviously. 
logic is a bit different for closed period, right? However, here I'm using functionality of my table too. Logic is similar until we get to which rows to select. And here I'm selecting only rows which have from in months offset minus one. So current months will be marked as zero with offset zero. However, if it's finished months, it will be marked as minus one in my day table. So I'm selecting only those uh, dates. And again, I'm adding period column and I'm specifying for each row MTD closed period type text. Easy. I will not be going through QTD, similar. Quarter today, that's a bit different. And I found a bug and let me correct it. So for quarter to date, uh, closed period, selecting select is the same. However, conditions are different. So since I want current quarter, I'm specifying that, okay, quarter offset is zero. Okay. But I'm also adding additional condition because I want only finished ones in this quarter. So I'm adding condition that month's offset is less or equal minus one. So let's say if it's the third month in the quarter, it will only select first and second, which will have offset of minus one and minus two. I hope you get it. And again, adding it to the table. Add an additional column. Year to date works similarly. Year to date close period works similarly. Fiscal year to date, I have a flag for fiscal year to date dates in my date table too. So again, it's just simple equals to one and select range of dates. And when it comes to, and here I have to correct again the bug. For fiscal year to date, close period, again, months of set equal or less minus one, and fiscal year to date equals to one. So it will not include current running months. And now we're getting to uh, rolling three months. That's where it gets interesting and different. Because if previously I relied on logic from the table, here I'm relying, or logic is listed here. So let's see, I'm building a list, not table yet. For now, I'm building a list of dates. And I have to provide it with start, I have to provide it with count, how many periods to add, and I have to tell it what's the step. Okay, so as you, if you remember, I've calculated start dates for all in periods at the top and store them away. So I'm providing start date for all in three months. Then I have to calculate how many days to generate dates or days or dates. So for that, I have to, from end date, rolling end date, if you remember, rolling end date is today plus one, so tomorrow. So from rolling, day, rolling end date, oops, let me switch to rolling three months. From rolling end date, um, I'm subtracting start date of rolling three months and I'm transforming it into duration in days. So I will get whole number. Okay. And I am telling list dates function that the step which I provided here is in days. So those are days, uh, hours, minutes, seconds. So specifying 
that it's uh, it equals to one day. So, okay, from that we'll get list of dates generated by this function, which I'm storing away into this variable. Move it on. Uh, we have to transform it into table, which I do here, table from list in build function, providing that list as an input for the function. There are no splitter splitting of anything. And we're naming that one column within the list as date. Okay, so far so good. And then it's actually quite similar to logic from previous periods. So adding column called period, each row is specified as row in three months, type text. And I'm repeating similar logic, just different start date for row in six months and row in 12 months. At the end, to get one table of all of the periods, you have to combine all of the results. So that's what I'm doing here. Combine tables. Table, combine, and listing all of those tables that I generated. Empty the period, closed period, etc., 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 until 12, roll in 12 months. Once I have that, there's just few more things to do. Change type to date type. And then, because I want to sort my periods in certain order, I'm also adding custom sort order column, which specifies if it's empty, produce one, two, three, you get the drift. Uh, and in the end, wait, actually, let me keep my fixes. In the end, that's what I'm getting. All of the dates for MTD. Okay. All of the dates for MTD close period. Etc. And period sort order, as you can see. However, we do not finish here. Once you've done that, and let me do that, you have to establish relationship be between period table and date table and have to be attentive here because once you do so and let me delete that relationship if i do it by default it will make many to one relationship where date table filters period table because in period table we have multiple overlapping dates which is normal. So, but by default, day table will be filtering period table, which is not what we want. It has to be the opposite. So how can you do that? Uh, you, of course, can do both, change cross filter direction to both. However, best practice, usually, for the most part, you don't have to filter in both directions. And I usually don't do that. So in this case, what I do is I specify many to many. I know that in the table, I have only one date for each record. Yet, I'm specifying many to many. And I am telling it that cross filter direction is only one direction, single direction, period, filters, date. And by doing this, I'm getting the result that I want, where a period table filters, you see the arrow pointing down, day table, exactly how I need it. Okay. And here, as you can see, I have table with fiscal year, fiscal year months, just to see that it works. So currently August, months to date, showing August, Great, a closed period showing July, great, quarter showing July, August, still great, closed period, just July, still correct. Let's see, we're all in three months, 
roll in three months. Okay, currently it's middle of August, so yes, it will actually include some dates from May too. Or oh, fiscal year today, close period. Um, yes, until July. Works correctly. So that's how you can leverage my ultimate day table and build on top of it simple period table to filter your data in different time slices. Hope that helps. And that's all for today. Make sure to check out other videos on my channel. Subscribe and see you in the next one.